An ILS approach provides aircraft with lateral guidance by using a localizer. This example from the Flight Insight IFR Online Ground School uses the ILS approach at Sioux City. Two signals are broadcast from the back or departure end of the runway and oriented so that they overlap along the extended center line of the runway. This is the localizer course. An aircraft uses its onboard equipment to tell if it's to the right of the course, to the left, or on the extended center line. Most localizers used in instrument approaches like this are aligned with the runway center line, but there are some exceptions. Here's an approach into the Dalles, Oregon. This is an example of an LDA approach, or localizer type directional aid. AIM 1-1-9C says an LDA is of comparable use and accuracy to a localizer, but isn't part of a complete ILS. On a typical localizer approach, the broadcast signals would start from the back of the runway and converge along the extended center line like on an ILS. The localizer feather symbol would be used to express the approach course. Here's a look at that approach course starting from the runway and working our way back out. You notice that there's some significant terrain along the extended center line, which might mean we can't design an approach with sufficient protection along that course. That river on the left, though, provides some low terrain over which an approach might be made. To take advantage of this, we've moved the localizer signal from the departure end of runway 25 up closer to the approach end and offset a bit to where the symbol of the plan view is. And more importantly, we've offset the signal so that it doesn't follow the extended center line, but actually provides a course which is more or less over the lower terrain of the Columbia River. So this is where we find the approach feather of this LDA. If we look at the airport view on the approach plate, we see an arrow representing the approach course at 238 degrees, leading not into the runway, but to that localizer offset to the south side of runway 25. On the satellite view, we could see the location of that localizer as well. In addition to that localizer antenna though, there's also a glide slope in the same position. Now, there aren't many LDA approaches, only a couple dozen in the US, but this LDA approach is even more rare because it also incorporates a glide slope antenna. This is definitely not the case with most LDA approaches, but this one will also provide vertical guidance in addition to the lateral. It's important to keep in mind that this approach, along with any other LDA, is very much a non-precision approach. Even though we have vertical guidance on this approach, and we will intercept the glide slope. Think of this particular LDA approach like you would an LPV approach with a GPS. It's a non-precision approach and treated as such for purposes of things like alternate planning, but we can use the minimum as a decision altitude, executing a missed approach at that point on the glide slope. Notice also the steeper glide slope angle on this approach. There's definitely a number of uncommon things on this approach. The initial approach fix is VECU. We can arrive at VECU westbound along Victor 112. Even on the en route chart, we can use the LDA to identify VECU as the intersection of the airway we're flying on, the 080 radial from the Clickitat VOR, and the LDA course. So in the cockpit, we'd have tuned into both. From here, there aren't too many surprises regarding flying the approach. We won't be doing the procedure turn, having arrived on Victor 112 westbound, but coming from another area, we may need to use the procedure turn to descend from a higher and route altitude given all the surrounding terrain. We need DME on this particular approach to identify the step-down fixes. We'll intercept the glide slope at 3,800 feet and follow it down to 1,368 feet where we'll either decide to go missed or break off the approach course and get aligned with the runway for landing. Notice how far above ground we'll be at the decision altitude, 1,125 feet. So we'll still be quite far out from the runway at the point we need to have sight of it. Compare that with a typical 200 feet decision height of an ILS. This is why the visibility minimums are higher, at three statute miles. So all in all, there's not much to an LDA approach. They're very much non-precision approaches since they aren't aligned with the runway center line, and even ones with vertical guidance like this one don't get you very close to the runway threshold. But they offer a good deal more accuracy than a VOR approach aligned with the same approach course would. IFR Ground School is in session now. This video is a great sample of the types of training you'll receive in the full course integrating animation and graphic design, simulator and other technology, and focused direct instruction. 
dash on over to the website flight-insight.com for more.